Okay. Yeah. So if we get going here on Q7. So, um, first one's easy enough. This is just like those uh, Z score things. Uh, one person picked at random um, is less than 50 years old. So what I done first of all is write that in terms of the X's. So what's the probability that X is less than 50? You get a Z score for that 50. Z equals 50 minus 48.2 over 10.6. So then z is equal to 50 minus 48.2 over 10.6. So yeah, get the same z score again. So it's z is 0 0.17. So this is really a question about what's the probability that z is below that. And so that just read straight from the tables. And you read that from the tables, you get 0 0.5675. Okay. Now, next one's interesting. Exactly 10% of people um, are at least this age, unknown age A. So the way to write that, at least this age. So you have a second to think about it, and then you realize it's X. The probability that X is greater than this unknown value A is equal to 0 0.1. You know, it's greater than 10% um, are older. Yeah, at least this age. So um, you go to your tables book. Um, and you can read off what's the probability that x is less than this a. So in other words, I'll just draw a little bell curve of this here. So you can visualize it. There's your zero. And there's some unknown value here, a. Now, a has to be in its z-score version, okay? But then there's this little area up here that's 0 0.1. And so the area below it then is 0 0.9, as I'm writing there. So you go to your tables book, and you find the z-score that has 0 0.9 below it. And you'll see that it's the z-score of um, 1.2. Uh, to it. So back to the original thing. So its probability of this is the 0. Uh, is the 0. 0.1. The probability that z is less than 1.28 is the 0. 0.9. But the main thing is anyway, this is the correct z score we're after. And you set your z score equal to your z score formula. You know your x minus mu over sigma. So you go 1.28 equals the x which we're looking for. You can call it a. Um, probably better to call it a. Um, 48.2 over 10.6 and then you multiply across by that and add 48.2 which by 10.6 plus 48.2 yeah so I'm getting the same value again so it's about 61 this a this age is 61.768 the nearest whole number so a is about 62 years old so they need to be at least 62 years old sound right uh, very 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 easy b for newly tried uh, like super repetitive come up all the time very easy um it's basically asking for exactly two successes in six attempts six choose two you know fifth to the power of two or fifth to the power of four you know too easy too easy so that works out as, uh, will I type it in again? I will, just to be sure. Wrong with the word. Yep, and it's better to give it as a fraction then. Uh, 7, 6, 8, 3, 1, 2, 5. So that gets probably that exactly 2. Down, this question below is quite interesting as well. Um, so this is, this is a good one. Uh, so this is like none of them use the pool. So this is like no successes. So what this is here, it's like n choose zero for no successes. Fifth to the power of zero. Four fifths to the power of n minus zero. And then that, now it's weird. Usually when they ask these, it's like is less than this, but they're saying is this. So you don't do an inequality here. You literally just set it like this. Set it equal. So that'd be none of them use the pool, so zero successes. Um, n choose zero, so you need to know that that's one. Something to the power of zero is also one. So this really is just four fifths. Power of n is 0 0.0047. Using logs, n is equal to log with the base four fifths, 0 0.0047. Type that into your calculator.
you'll get 24.02. Now, as I said, it's, it's, it's better when they say it's less than or greater than this. So you, to be honest, just roll around that to 24 people, you know. But I haven't been specific enough on uh, that. So make sure you have that number there, and that's where the marks are, really. And they didn't really be specific enough to round it properly. Okay. Right, uh, this here, this the, this good question, very good question. Uh, a lot of people who struggle with this one. So you need to draw, when you're given information like this, you need to be drawing a tree diagram. It's the best way to go about it. So I've done a tree diagram. I put N here and O here, new system, old system. And then off this here, I'll put a B and an NB for booked and not booked. Filled in the probabilities. Um, Forty-eight percent on the old site, so zero point four five down here. Zero point five five up here. If you book on the new site, um, two fifths, which means this here is three fifths. If you book on the old site, there's a third of a chance of that happening. And then this is two thirds. And what you do is you multiply or multiply your way to the end. Of the diagram so the at the B here it will be 0 0.05 times 2 fifths and when I multiplied all them out got him to be 11 over 50 got him to be 33 over 100 3 over 20 and 3 over 10 and you can just see this as well I'll just write them all over 100 22 over 100 33 over 100 15 over 100 and then 30 over 100. If you add them up, you get one, which you should. Now, this is a bit, this is the tough part of this question. So, find the probability that the person used the new booking system um, given that they booked a room. So, these two people I'm circling here booked a room, but it was only this person here that used the new system. So, the way to do it is to literally just write them over one another so you go or sorry like this so the one you want on top the booked on the new system divided by all the people who booked so it was 22 over 100 plus 15 over 100 and then that works out as 22 over 37 that's the answer and then it wanted it as a percentage so that's 59.46 percent you know 59 percent to the near percent now what is that there? So that that's the answer. Some people would have just been able to reason that in their head. But what that is is it's the it's a bit like the probability. This here is, um, that is that you use the new system given that you've booked. And if you look at it as well, if you study it, this is the given formula because this thing here is P N B or capital N. It's the probability of N intersect B, and then the thing on the bottom down here over the probability of B book in the system, which is the two things added up. So it's a good question. It's well, it's well, well, well put. Okay. Hypothesis test here, an easy enough hypothesis test, um, but it's with the um, portions. So Null hypothesis is the no change statement. So what I wrote down for this, I'm just going to verbally announce it to you. I'm not going to write it in not with the mouse. Um, so it's the kind of no change here. I'll say it's, you know this guy's the no change, and he's kind of saying that you know p is still p is still equal to 0 0.75, you know, and then he's saying here that yes, things have changed and p does not equal 0 0.75. So just to I'll verbally announce it here. We're testing at the 5% level of significance to see is there a change in the percentage of customers who rate this hotel. So the null hypothesis will say no, there is no change in the percentage of customers who rate this hotel as the best chain in Europe. Alternative hypothesis says is there is a change to the percentage of customers who rate this um, PK hotel as the best chain in, in Europe. So what you do, you use this formula here p hat plus minus 1.96 square root p hat bracket 1 minus p hat over n 
your p hat here is 76, 765 over 1000, plus minus 1.96, square root, no, nicely enough, write this, no such, bracket 1 minus 765 over 1000, so you should write it like this, you know, it's pick, I pick up max 10 marks for this, you know, um, even if I do make a mistake in the calculator kind of job. Like such, and then you put your P in the middle, and you put the plus version on the right, and I got 79.13 on this side, and I got 73.87 on this side, and my reason here is as P, so I'm announcing this to you, I'm not going to write it, as P is inside the interval, which you can clearly see 75 is in there. Okay, we conclude that there is no change that wins out. So we reject H1, we do not reject H0. And then your final conclusion then is you just reword at the 5% level of significance. There is evidence to suggest that there is no change in the percentage of customers who rate PK as the best change rule because the P was inside the interval and the no change statement won. So, for example, if this lower limit was like 76% and this was 83%, then there, there, there would be at the 5% level of significance a change. But as P is in there, there isn't. Cool. All right, question eight. Um, pretty soft. Pretty soft here um, for sure. Uh, this edge here is the circumference of a circle, which is 2 pi r. So this edge here is 2 pi r. This here is the height, which is 15. Yeah. So this here, because the radius is 5, this here is 10 pi. And then that then, when you type in the calculator, is 31.4 centimeters. Like such. Now, that's all grand. So that outer edge there is the circumference of the circle, which flattens out to be this line here. Cool. All right, Tommy makes uh, Tommy makes another cylinder of uh, height 22 and diameter 12. And you were given a hint here, which you probably shouldn't have been given to use Pythagoras, but you know they wanted to make it easy. I'm sure, people got it. Um, so find the volume of the sphere. So when you look in from the side, so I'll draw it in uh, looking in from the side. So you see a circle on the outside, you'll see a, a rectangle like this, there's your center, this is the triangle that they're on about, you join that to that, and that to that, it's this red triangle here, that there's the radius that we're looking for, that's your R, this here is half the height which is 11, and then this here is the radius of the cylinder with a diameter of 6, so the radius is 6. So Pythagoras says that R is equal to root 11 squared plus 6 squared, which was root 157. So volume of a sphere then is 4 pi over 3 r cubed. Um, and then that's, you know, 4 pi over 3 root 157 all the power of 3. And I typed that in. I got 8,240.3 centimeters cubed. Okay, pretty good. Now, so this is this this is reasonable enough, reasonable enough question, uh, sort of geometry stuff. So I have some of the stuff marked in the diagram. So um I'll build it up a little bit here um just to talk about so a lot of load of stuff being mentioned there. Uh they tell you anyways the first thing is is why is uh, that angle there that I'm making in pink now why is that 90 degrees well there's a theorem that if this is the diameter so this here is like an arc here this thing here so if the arc you're standing on makes the diameter of the circle the angle always subtended out here at the circumference is 90 degrees so as I said that's the theorem it's in your textbook um, but the angle subtended on the circumference is always 90 degrees if you're standing on the diameter very good so that's why that there is 90 now, uh, hence or otherwise, prove that the these two triangles are similar. 
So I'll just sketch the triangle we're on about. We're on about this big one here. We're on about this small, smaller one uh, in here. It's light blue. Right. First things first is similar. You just need to show they have the same angles. They have a common angle up here. So that'd be my in my writing. So angle you call it whatever ECB uh, is common to both. And then they both have a right angle. You know, they both have a right angle. And sure, we've shown now that two angles in a triangle are the same. And sure, that means the third has to be the same if you ever think about that. So you would just make that statement. Therefore, third angle has to be the same. Because, you know, those two angles, if they're the same, you take them away from 180, you get the same third angle. And you would just state what that angle is. The angle is C, D, B is equal to E, B, C. Therefore, they're similar. Equiangular is another word for similar. Right. This is uh, what they're on about here. So show the statement. Show the Pythagoras here. So the best way to do this is when you're dealing with a complicated um, question like this is you want to resketch these triangles on your page side by side so you can see the ratio. So this, this is a tough question. A lot of people will struggle with this. So this in red is my first triangle. I'll sketch it down here in red. And I'm going to rotate it. Um, and I'm going to first, I'll draw as well in light blue the other triangle that we're going to work with. This guy here. So, and I'm not going to rotate him. Not going to rotate him. I'm going to leave him as he is. I'll just keep this book as I have it in the copy. So I had that one over on the right. Okay. Now, I'm not rotating that blue one, so I'll call all his edges as they are. So then you're right in the edges, E, B, C. Now, the red one got rotated, so I need to think about how I rotate it. Remember, this is the right angle, so this here is called B. Now, this here, C, is the common angle, so this up here, they're the same thing. So this here is C, and then down here is D. So you just have to think about that. You'll be happy with it. So always mark in the vertices first, and then kind of match up your angles. Now. This is the important part now is mar marking the dimensions. So C to E is known as the height of this top cone that we're looking to find. E to B is known as the radius of this cone. And then the hypotenuse then is according to Pythagoras H squared plus R squared. Now over on this here, C to D is the diameter of the sphere. And we were told the radius of the sphere is 10. So that means this this C to D thing is 20. Now the only other thing you have to spot is that CB is common. See CB there, CB. So this also is root H squared plus R squared. And from that then you can write your similar ratios. So you can write this small side, H, over its equivalent side, root h squared plus r squared. So this side over its equivalent side is equal to this side over its equivalent side. h squared plus r squared, that side over its equivalent side, 20. So that's why you redraw the triangles and put them side by side. Cross multiply, 20h equals h squared plus r squared. You go up there, you go up there. And then r squared equals 20h minus h squared. That's it done. Now, Hence write the volume uh, that gives max, hence write h that gives the max volume. So um, volume of a cone, one third pi r squared h. We know r now, so we'll write this as pi over three times 20 h minus h squared times h. Multiply that out. V, I'm moving up here, pi over three. 20 h squared minus h cubed. Take a derivative of that if you want to maximize it. dv dh. The pi over 3 does nothing, it's just out the front. It's a number. This is 40 h minus 3 h squared. Set that equal to 0. The pi over 3 will disappear. 
and so you have 40h minus 3h squared equals 0. If you factor out your h, 40 minus 3h. And then there's two ways this is 0, if h is 0 and if h is 40 over 3. And then just to prove that this is the answer, that's the maximum one. Just to prove it's the right one, I'll get the second derivative, v dash dash h. That will work out as pi over 3. You don't, you don't have to do this. Well, maybe you don't. Depends on the marking scheme. How do you know that that's the max volume? No, it should be. You put 0 in, you'll get 0. So that's fine. Maybe you should state that, though, that this is the minimum and that's the max. But again, the marking scheme will probably be generous. and You just write that, you're done. So second derivative is 40h. Or sorry, it's just 40. Uh, minus 6h. And if you put your 40 over 3 in there, v dash dash 40 over 3, it works out as uh, minus 40 pi over 3, which is less than 0, so it must be a max. So it is a max. And then remember, put that in uh, centimeters because h is at c. If you check and see if you remember the units so make sure you're right uh, 40 over 3 centimeters find the h yeah. so they didn't want the volume they just want the height right this question nine reasonable question it's a good question interesting one did you guide you through it though a bit too much and some three people uh right write down the equation circle again this is very soft marks um they've already had a question like this on the paper so far where you write it you know, so it's very simple stuff. Equals one four four. Yes. Okay, that's all fine. Um. Next thing down here. Amina is at point A eight, which is on the circle. Find A. Right. So she's on the circle at some point uh, called A eight. So you literally just put the point into the circle because it's on the circle so you put the point into the circle a minus 1 squared plus 8 minus 17 squared equals 144 a squared minus 2a plus 1 but there's 9 squared which is 81 and you have your 81 take away 144 and you get you add your 1 to it don't do too many things at once here. 81 minus 144, so yeah, we get minus 63 equals 0. And that's a squared minus 2a minus 62 equals 0. Use your minus b formula on that. Make sure you show it first on the exam before you pick up your calculator. 2 plus minus square root 2 squared minus 4 bracket 1 bracket minus 62 all over 2. So you see, even if I type into the calculator wrong, it's not an issue because I showed working it out. Um, so I got 1 plus 3 root 7, and I got 1 minus 3 root 7. That's wrong because a has to be greater than 0, which, which it says. Okay, 1 plus 3 root 7, does it in the units? Uh, a is a point, so it's a coordinate. So it would have units, but I don't think they're going looking for the fact that it's... Uh, you know, it's meters times 100. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. So this guy now is at the point 10.6, which was on the diagram. And we're then asked, what's the shortest distance from him to the circle? And then to multiply your answer by 100. So best way to think about this is this is the shortest way to the stream so you walk perpendicularly to the circle and all you got to do to get this green distance here is take it away from the radius there so you work out this red distance d and you get this distance as d minus r so that's you work walking perpendicularly towards the center that's the shortest way to get to that stream so you get the distance, the d, um, by distance between two points. So I went what, 10, get it here. 
10 minus 1 squared plus 6 minus 17 squared. Type that into your calculator. You'll get root 202. So then the shortest distance here, which is what we're after, isn't it? Work out the shortest distance, yeah? Um, is just simply going to be the radius of that big circle, which is 12. So this D minus R is root 202 minus 12. Type that into your calculator, you'll get 2.213. You multiply your answer by 100 then, and you get 221.3 meters. And you can round it then to the nearest meter then, 221. Okay, interesting question for sure. Now, uh, they give us the diagram again, which was good. Nothing wrong with that. Uh, there is a, a line L, not shown. Now, it's parallel to the y-axis, which means it's a vertical line. And it's a tangent to S, so it's this line they're on about here. And they're asking you for the equation of that pink line there. So, what's the equation of that pink line there? Well, very easy. The radius is 12. This here is 1. So this must be going through 13 here because this distance here is 12. And so if it's a vertical line that goes through 12, its equation is literally just x equals 13. No more workings than that. That's all it is. Vertical line x equals 13. Okay. Now, uh, next thing down here is it's a good question. So W has that equation there, straight line. Find the coordinates of a point on the road that's closest to 10, 6. And then they give you the hint on how to do it. So it's about, it's when you want to get the shortest distance, you walk perpendicularly like that. So it's that point here, I'll mark it in green. There. So because they're at a right angle, what I can do is, if I can create the equation of the pink line, I can solve simultaneous equations, the pink line's equation with this, to get the point of intersection in green. It's a right angle there, that's not an or. Okay. So, uh, I just need the equation of the pink line, and that's what the hint was. Um, so I'll first of all get the slope of this line, which you should be able to read off. The slope of that line's a third, which means the slope of the pink line is minus 3. Yes. So it goes through 10, 6, so then its equation is y minus 6 equals minus 3 times x minus 10. So then y minus 6 equals minus 3x plus 30. 3x, bring it all over to the left, plus y. Thirty, thirty, plus thirty. So then this here is uh, minus thirty-six equals zero. Very good, very good. Okay, so I just got it. You can do this whatever way you want. Uh, you're just solving this simultaneously with this, you know. So what I done was I multiplied the bottom one here, this this orange thing, by uh, minus three, and brought it all over. So I got minus three x plus nine y. Brought this over. The minus 9 multiplied by minus 3 becomes a plus 27. Add them. 10y is uh, plus 9. Y is minus, or no, minus 9. Then y equals 9 over 10. And I remember in Desmos, I actually checked. This, this is definitely correct. And then x equals, you get x from this here, you just bring. 3y over, so it's 9 plus 3 times y. 9 plus 3 times your 9 over 10. Yeah, so done the Desmos. No need to type it in. So the answer is it is 117 over 10. So the point, remember you asked for the coordinates, so you have to give it as a point. 117 over 10, 9 over 10. And then if you want, you can write it as a decimal, 11.709, which is about where it is. You can see it's a bit over to the 10, which is the 11.7, and it's it's quite low down, so it's, there's a 0 0.9 for you. Okay. That's fine. 
last bit here last bit's an interesting one so he's at he's at a point along the line and then he moves 1200 along the line now if i get it up here again so you can see how it's done we know the slope of this line so he saw at some random point uh they actually give us in the nine zero yeah so they've told us uh this point here that's that's probably where he is he's at a zero on the y now he's going to move 1200 up this road 1200 so we just need to take into account his slope to work out what the x run and the y run is so because the slope of that line was a third whatever this y run what the y height change is he runs three times that so you can just use there's as there's loads of ways to do that so it's just 1200 that's y and that's 3y use pythagoras then now uh as well too look let me do it there it's just 12 because uh you divide it by 100 because of the unit thing so you get 9y squared plus y squared equals 144 10y squared equals 144 so then y squared equals uh, 144 over 10 and uh, because y is going to be a positive number we won't we won't it is plus and minus but we just say it's root uh, 144 over 10 as such let me get the exact location here now if I can um, Yes, so I took the square root of that then. Yeah, so just see my numbers here in the copy. Are a little out. So where did I get that from? Um, so this this solution here is definitely correct. Where I'm doing this. Um yeah, don't know where I got that number from. So I'll keep going with that there. Um does it say anything about the answers being thirds? Uh correct to one decimal place. Okay, so that helps. Um so yeah, y is working out as a weird number. So root one four four. Yep. Yeah. Root 144 over 10. So it's about 3.7. 3. Point, I can write it. 3.7. Uh, 947. Because I'm going to multiply it by 100, so I want to keep it with accuracy. Uh, you could call it 95, it's fine. So that means the 3y then, which is the x run, is 3 times that. And that's eleven point uh, three eight four. So the that's how much we're changing from our original coordinates. Let me scroll down that there, that point there, which is uh, nine zero. So his new point will be nine plus the x run, comma. The zero plus the y run, which was three point seven and nine five, and then yeah, so we'll we'll do a nice bit of rounding on this here. So that's probably what that that's twenty point four, uh, comma, uh, three point eight, something something like that. Uh, grant, grant, grant. So I think we're all good there. Let's do a quick calculation here to make sure. Yeah, I'm happy with that. It'll do. So that's the method, anyways. That's the tricky part there, interpreting the slope like this, the rise and run, and splitting up the 1,200 run distance, um, like that. Right. Get on to the question 10, and we're good. So we have uh to show OB here first of all is 120. Very easily done. Um, this radius here, NO. Is also the radius here it's the same wiper blade so you just say for the examiner there no equals OB which equals the radius 
of the wiper blade which equals 120 centimeters because you can see it's 100 plus 20 you know uh, hence show BOT is 41 point uh, thing BOT so you need to sketch this triangle here Uh, mark that in, that's your BOT, mark that in as theta. Remember this is, uh, this here is known, this is the 120, remember BO, we just got it there, OB. Now OT is known, it's 90. So then uh, cos, cos theta equals adjacent over hypotenuse. So if you go cos inverse, 9 over 12, or 90 over 12, you will get 41.41 degrees. Which is her. Okay, Let me round it to one decimal. Hence, find this area, and they're being very soft there in telling you how to do it, where you take a big sector away from a small sector. But sure, it's the way it is. Um, so, this here and this here are the same. Both of them are the 41.4 job. So, the actual angle we're sweeping to is in here so you go 180 minus those two guys so 180 minus 41.4 minus 41.4 and you'll get that angle that we're sweeping through uh, to be 97.2 so that's correct 97.2 and um, we need now also we need the radius of the smaller sector in other words we need oa here we need that length O to A. And the best way to do that is to draw this little triangle here in red. Remember that angle is still what we know. It's still 41.41 degrees. Uh, you can call it 41.4, it's fine. Uh, this here, this height is 20. See that vertical height is 20. This here is the unknown. This is the small or that we're looking for. Call it or. So you'd write that sign. 41.41 equals opposite over hypotenuse so then or is 20 over sine 41.41 so then the radius of that small circle which you need for the question uh, works out as 30.267 something like that centimeters and you can see it's about 30 because the vertical there is 20 so then, I can make a bit of room. So, the shaded area, I'll call it A shade, is the big sector, and the area of the sector formula is in your tables book. If it's pi or squared, so this is the big sector now. So this is one twenty. It's it is it is one twenty. Yeah. Thinking of the next question where things change. Uh, pi r squared times the angle, which was 97.2 over 360. Take away the small sector down there in white. Pi times the radius we just worked out. 30.267 squared. And then that's times the angle of 97.2 over 360. Again, if I pick up a calculator and get the wrong answer, it's fine, like the examiner sees that I've written the correct numbers. So that's why you should always do your math like that. Right, so that area works out as, not typing it in again, I got uh, 11347, or that's not written, 437, and then I got 0.56 centimeters squared. So it's probably just the nearest. So I got 11,437 cm squared cool so the next part was way too easy um, so it tells you to uh, that's that done yeah tells you uh, exactly what to do here which you shouldn't be told you shouldn't be told to use the cosine rule you shouldn't be given the hint to call that x you know but it is what it is so they're on about this triangle here um, they're telling you to call this x, and sure this is also x because it's the radius. Um, then we're looking for this thing here. This, or no, we know this length here. This is 180, and then this angle in here. 
the angle there is 105. So you use your cosine rule then. 180 squared. So we're looking for x, you know. 180 squared equals x squared plus x squared minus 2bc, 2x squared, cosine 105. So then, um, you can factor out your x squared. So x squared equals 180 squared. Um, Divide it by 2 minus 2 cos 1 over. Now you don't have to move it all like I, in one go like I did there, but if you can, that's great. So I'll just work that out again. A squared over 2 minus 2 cos 105. Make sure your calculator is in degree mode. And I got uh, 113.44 centimeters. And that looks that looks reasonable. It is a little bit smaller than the last one, I think, which was 120, wasn't it? Yeah, 13.44, yeah, same value, and put the cm at the end. Right, and then there's a the last sort of completely different type of thing, then it's not trigonometry anymore. Uh, so you're driving home, there's five sets of lights, they can be red, green, or orange. How many different patterns uh, could you have with the five traffic lights? So I think the easy first easy way to think about this is five boxes multiplied together. You could have three colors in the first, three there, three there, three there. So three to the five. Because you can have three options there, and you can have three options there, and you have three options here. So that works out as two, four, three. How many different patterns could the five tri traffic lights make if the first is supposed to be red and the fifth is not red? Five boxes and the first is red so you have to have a one there the fifth is not red so I would say there's two options there and then the rest can be whatever they want okay three by three by three by two 54 options 54 patterns as well just to say 54 options 54 patterns Right, that's all fine. You know, that's easy marks. And then there's this really tough part at the end that gets people thinking. Um, you know, no two can be consecutive. You can't go red, red, you know. Uh, you couldn't have that, for example, there at the start. So it takes a bit of thinking about, you know, you make some half-decent attempt at it, and then you just move on. Just don't waste all your time on it. It's nice that it's the last question on the paper, so you don't have to worry about it. Um, but it would take time if you're going back looking at something else. Right. The way I thought about this is I said, right, the first light could be whatever it wants, but the next light can't be what color this was. So this is some whatever color. Say it's red, you can't be red, so you only have two options really, because you can't be the color just before. And so this now is some color, whatever, but the next one can't be that color, so he still only has two options, and then it goes like that all the way to the end, because the one after can't have the one's color before. Now, that's just my way of doing it. Hopefully it's the right answer. But as I said, with these things, you know, the more time you spend thinking about it, the more, t more closer, more confident you'll become with the answer. Um, so that's 48. So they're just the way they are, these questions. That's 48, 48 pattern, 48 ways. Okay, all right, we'll leave that there. Thanks for watching, guys. Best of luck.